Hi friends, Prepared Suburbanite here. Hope you're all doing well. Today is Saturday of Labor Day weekend 2021. And I know I've mentioned in the last uh, couple of videos that I've put up about reworking and rethinking your prepper plan. So I wanted to share with you what we're doing here. So stick around. So I guess uh, we'll just start at the beginning and I'll call it step number one. Relook at the reasons that you're engaged in being prepared, being a prepper. We started 10 or 12 years ago um, in earnest, I guess. It, 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 in the very beginning it was just, hey, let's just stock up on a few extra things and we really didn't have much of a plan. But that was 12 years ago when, <laughs> when the uh, uh, voters of the uh, country backed up the Titanic and rammed the iceberg again in uh, 2012 when we re-elected Barack Obama. That was the trigger for me to really get serious about it. I cleaned out the garage, I reorganized stuff. I uh, put a plan together looking at uh, what we needed to be doing and why. And those reasons, and my wife and I were sitting around talking about this uh, over the last couple of days, um, in reverse order, I was concerned that the Obama administration would get us into a war somehow, some sort of a global conflict. Uh, possibly even a nuclear thing um, that um, could very well have been right here within the borders of the United States. So I was concerned about that, but that was like number five on the list. Number four for us here was a uh, natural disaster. Um, floods, hurricanes, uh, solar EMPs, tornadoes, um, even the, the Yellowstone uh, supervolcano is uh, one of the issues that I had in my mind when we put our plan together. So that was number four, natural disasters. Number three on the list of priorities was an economic crisis, some sort of a stock market crash. Um, the national debt kind of a thing, inflation going rampant and all that. Um, so that was number three and I was concerned about that because we were still working, we hadn't retired yet and I was concerned that the any kind of a economic downturn would put us in a pickle and I was concerned about that. So I really took a hard look at um, our finances and how we were um, planning to get out of final debt and all that. So that was number three. Number two, uh, pretty much based on the uh, sign at the Times uh, back in uh, 2010, 2012, etc., cetera, um, was an internal civil war, a societal breakdown, looters, marauders, gangs, that kind of stuff. Um, all kind of triggered by whatever the other things were. And I've mentioned this in previous videos, um, kind of a cascade effect. So if there was a, an economic downturn or if there was a significant natural disaster, flood, hurricane, uh, tornado, something, that the marauders would be out and they'd be... Um, stealing stuff out of people's houses and ransacking stores and all that kind of stuff. And I was concerned about that. So I looked at our plan and said, what do I need to do to be prepared should that happen? And my number one reason back at that point in time, um, I'm talking uh, 2010, 2012, in that, in that time frame there, um, was my desire to become even more self-reliant. 
I wanted to make sure that, because uh, uh, paying for life insurance, paying for health insurance, I wanted to make sure that I had insurance for any of the things that could possibly happen. So I wanted to develop um, more self-reliance, um, survival skills, uh, outdoor skills, um, you name it, um, learning how to do a lot of things that I never really spent any time learning how to do before. Um, I had some experience doing uh, remodeling and carpenter work and stuff like that, but I wanted to get a little bit better, a uh, little bit more rounded out with uh, um, other skills. And so I really started working on that together with what we were doing with the rest of our pepper pl uh, prepping plan. So I guess it, it um, kind of shows that I've only been a prepper for maybe 12 or so years. And I, I got to give my wife credit. She has been a prepper pretty much all her life. She grew up on a, uh, uh, a working dairy farm in northern Pennsylvania, and um, they were struggling um, from uh, uh, paycheck to paycheck. They were trying to work the land. They had cows, uh, chickens, uh, all that kind of stuff. And her dad worked in a factory nearby, but had to drive 25 or 30 miles to work every day and uh, things were a little tight. There was uh, seven kids. My wife was the oldest girl. She had three older brothers and three younger sisters. So quite a lot fell on her. She had to learn how to cook <laughs> um, for um, nine people. And she has not forgotten how to do that because every once in a while she'll still prepare a meal for just the two of us that would feed nine people. So it's uh, kind of kind of neat, but she understood the basics of being prepared. She always wanted to have a little bit of extra put away, a little bit of extra flour, a little bit of extra rice, a few extra cans of vegetables or soup or whatever, just to have it in a, a backup kind of a mode. Made her feel comfortable, but she's been a prepper pretty much all her life. So switching the focus to today's world and all the things that are going on in the world and in our country, uh, things have changed uh, since 12 or 14, 10, 12 years ago. Things have changed quite a bit. There's a lot more uh, stuff going on that I really never thought I'd see, but it's with us every single day. So in reverse order again. Here's how I'm classifying my threats that I need to be prepared for right here. Number five, natural disasters. So natural disasters drop down a bit, uh, one step on the, uh, on the scale, but um, it's been quite a, quite a long time. We do get um, hurricanes, we do get uh, high winds and storms and a few power outages here and there, but really haven't experienced anything huge, but it's still in the top five. So I want to make sure that I'm prepared if we end up experiencing some sort of a natural disaster, a calamity, something I want to make sure that I've got enough food, water, uh, shelter, alternate cooking sources, all that kind of stuff to make sure that I can weather that kind of a storm. Number four on the list, global conflict, that, that impending threat of war, um, unrest in the world, um, terrorist attacks, you name it. Um, I'm concerned about that and what effect it's going to have on us living here in the United States. I'm concerned about a pandemic. Well, because we've been living with it for the last 18 or plus months, um, it was not on my original list. I never really thought that a pandemic was really a high priority kind of a thing, but guess what happened? And here we are still facing it 
Um, a lot of weird stuff going on that I'm not going to get into in this particular video, but uh, face diapers and social distancing and closing restaurants and closing uh, all kinds of different venues uh, in the name of public safety, in the name of personal safety, whatever. But uh, pandemic was never on my list before, but it is now. So pandemic was number three. Number two, the economic collapse. <laughs> the, the stock markets are just absolutely undescribable, uh, almost illogical. Whenever there's like really bad news, like uh, ending the war in uh, Afghanistan and stranding um, our citizens and our allies in a foreign country, uh, the stock market goes up. It makes no sense to me at all. What's going on in our southern border doesn't seem to be affecting the uh, stock markets at all because they continue to go up and up and up. And yeah, I'm sure I'm invested in the stock market. My 401k, my IRAs are all in uh, some form of the stock market right now and they're appreciating in value. Um, every month is when I go check on things, it's always good news. And so I'm concerned too much good news <laughs> means that there's bad news right around the corner. And I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about what's going on with inflation right now. I'm very concerned about what Congress is doing with um, the spending plans that they're tossing around back and forth, uh, trillions and trillions of dollars. Um, I think it's just going to continue to spiral the inflationary um, rocket higher and higher and higher. So I'm very concerned about that and what we're doing with that. And right now, the number one for me, the number one threat is what I call leftism. It's going to lead to civil unrest, and it already has. I just read yesterday that Candace Owens went to go get a, um, a COVID-19 test. I don't think she's been vaccinated, and I don't think she really wants to be vaccinated. But for certain reasons, she wanted to get a COVID-19 test. So she went to a testing site. They figured out who she was and denied her service. That's a direct threat. It really is a direct threat. So I'm concerned about the threat that the left is engaged in right now with what's going on in the politics, what's going on in the very far left influences in uh, Congress and in decision makings, uh, what's going on at the border, I think is a good example of it. What's going on with the inflationary spiral right now, I think is good evidence of it. But I am really concerned about those two components of it. But on top of that, it's our loss of liberties, freedoms, and our God-given rights. So like I said earlier, the uh, step number one is assess your threats. Now, my threats and your threats are probably going to be two different things. I, I live on the uh, East Coast um, in North Carolina, so I've got a pretty good idea what's going on uh, weather-wise, climate-wise around here. And I, I think I know what my uh, threat risk is from that kind of a thing because of where I live and what my experience has been. Uh, living here for the last 20 plus years. Um, so that's number one is assess your risk and threat levels in your personal um, life, in your personal homestead. Number two, take inventory. Take a look at what you've got stockpiled. And I, I'm pretty sure that I'm already talking to folks that are prepping already that have been prepping for a quite a long time or are just beginning to get into prepping and you got to take you got to take time and figure out exactly what you got 
and is it the kind of food that you eat? So take a look at your food stores, take a look at what you've got stockpiled, make sure you've got enough to get you through whatever your worst case threat and risk level really is. So um, if you think it's going to be two weeks for you, if you think it's going to be two months for you, six months for you, a year, two years, assess what you've got, take inventory of what you got, and take a look at what your requirements for survival are going to be over the period of time based on your risk assessment and the time frames that you want to make sure that you've got covered. And it's going to be different for pretty much everybody. But take a look at your food. Take a look at your inventory of food. Canned goods, freeze, dried, um, you name it, packaged stuff, um, stuff that you buy from Mountain House, whatever. Um, make sure that you know how much you've got. Make sure you've got a way to cook it, uh, alternatives. If, if we lose power for a long period of time, do you have a way to cook the food? Whether it's outside on an open fire, whether it's your uh, propane uh, cooker on your uh, on your back deck or out in your backyard, um, propane stoves, um, open fire kind of stuff, um, sun ovens, kind of a good thing. So assess what your inventory is of alternate cooking methods. I think that's very important, particularly if we lose power. Take a look at your water situation. If you've got a well and it's powered by uh, an electric pump and you lose power, right, you've, got, you've got an issue. So you may want to look at alternative ways to get water, whether you uh, um, use a solar pump or a hand pump, whether you have to tote it from the local uh, pond or the local lake or a local stream and then uh, filter it and purify it so that it's potable whether you're collecting rainwater off your roof, um, make sure you've got multiple sources of water for the long term. We've got a 275-gallon water tote. I've got two 55-gallon drums that uh, catch rainwater. And that's just for gray water. That's for, like, flushing toilets and um, that kind of stuff. We can filter it. We can purify it. Uh, with a Berkey filter and all that kind of stuff, but um, you got to make sure that you got uh, yourself covered with water because you use a lot more water than you think you do. I just counted um, this morning, we've got 13 cases of water. That's a minimum of 24 uh, of the plastic bottles of water. Got 24 of them around. I've got uh, um, what are they, five gallon, uh, five gallon jugs, totes about this big. I've got about a dozen of those filled with good quality tap water. So I think we're going to be okay with that. But take a look at what your needs are going to be, how big your family is, how much water you currently use, and see what happens from there. Put your plan together based on that inventory. Take a look at your uh, personal self-defense. Take a look at what you're going to do to uh, protect your property and defend your property and your family. Um, not going to get into a whole lot of detail about that because YouTube really doesn't like that kind of stuff. But um, make sure you've got a couple of different means of self-defense that you practice with those means so that you know all the rules, all the safety stuff that goes along with it. And uh, just make sure you've got enough wherewithal to use it properly, not only for personal self-defense, but for the protection of your family and of your property. Take a look at any alternate plans that you may uh, find necessary, whether it's a bug out location, um, whether it's uh, whether you're going to try to shelter in place wherever you are, take a look at that, assess it against your uh, threat levels, and make sure that you've got the right kind of alternate plans set so that if the S does hit the fan, you've got a backup plan. Number three on the list, 
uh, actually number four on the list, um, is connect with others. You'll find, surprisingly enough, that there are quite a few folks that are invested in being prepared. Whether they've got six months worth of food or two weeks worth of food or water stored in their uh, uh, homestead, um, if they've got the proper mindset, you're going to want to try to connect with them. And you can do that through your local church, through community meetings, through uh, if, you, if you're exercising on a daily basis and walking uh, around your neighborhood and this and that. Stop and chat with people. Figure out what they're doing. See if you can just kind of get an idea where things are. My wife uh, walks uh, multiple times a week with a neighbor who is um, uh, quite prepared and enjoys talking about being prepared. So it's really, really important to find folks with a like mindset. They'll help you out. You can help them out. It's a matter of survival. Take a look at your financial situation. Take a look at your budget. If, if you've got any disposable extra income, or you can create additional disposable income, you're going to want to do that so that you can invest in your prepping plan, whether it's buying more food, whether it's purchasing sun ovens, whether it's uh, having a, a storage room, whether it's shelving units, um, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter because it's your plan and that's what you're really going after. So take a look at your finances, take a look at your budget, try to get debt free as best you can. And I know that that's quite a trick. Um, we were finally able to say, hey, we're debt free just a few years ago, just before we retired. And what a load off that was. It just makes you feel a whole lot better and it really does, if you don't have the debt, it gives you basically an extra source of income because you're not paying monthly bills, monthly installment plan bills, uh, house mortgages, car payments, that kind of stuff. So take a look at your finances, take a look at a budget so that you can cover all your bills, uh, your regular uh, expenses, your, your food budget, um, clothing budget, all that kind of stuff. And take a look at a real hard look, go through your checking account, You'll see where you're spending your money. Put a budget plan together. There's a number of them out there that are just kind of free in the, uh, in the internet that are actually pretty good that you can customize to your own personal needs. It's really, really important. And lastly, on your assessment plan is skill development. And I'm, I'm talking about anything. If, you, if you're a... Uh, if you like doing woodworking and carpentry, um, invest in that. Go to the local community college and take a course. There's a couple of trade schools right here in the Raleigh area that uh, um, teach those kind of classes, woodworking, they teach welding, they teach uh, uh, electrician um, skills, that kind of stuff at fairly reasonably priced, I think $75 to $125 for a class that you can get a certificate in um, that puts you on the, on the right path to um, being able to apply those skills properly. You can do uh, uh, Bushmaster kind of skills, uh, building fires, um, animal husbandry, uh, you name it. But if there's a skill that you think you want to get involved in, invest in it. It's worthwhile. So just a shout out uh, to some folks, what I've done in my storage area in my house is, is we picked up uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, five uh, sets of metal shelving units from our local uh, uh, big box store, I think uh, Lowe's and Home Depot and stuff like that. And um, we've been storing canned goods, we've been storing uh, number 10 cans and uh, water and uh, bottled water, that kind of stuff, on those shelves. Got a pretty good idea what we got. Got a pretty good idea of um, how it all fits together. Some of the, excuse me, some of the things that we invested in for the proper storage um, <laughs> didn't quite work out as well as we had thought. I saw um, probably five years ago 
um, a set of cardboard folding um, can dispensers, kind of first in, first out kind of things. And I invested in a dozen of those and uh, finally figured out how to put them together properly. And yeah, they work. Um, they're not very steady. They're not very sturdy. They do fall apart over time. Um, if they get wet somehow, um, they're pretty much absolutely worthless. So I've been looking for an alternative for that and uh, finally found it. Here's, uh, let's see if I can get it up there. Here's what it is. It's uh, from FIFO, the company's name. I'll, I'll put a link down in the uh, description box below. It's called the FIFO Can Tracker. Um, it'll hold 45 to 54 cans, you know, regular cans of vegetables and soup and stuff like that. Um, the, the reason that it's got a range is that you've got adjustable sizes that you can adjust this thing to that will allow you to do the, uh, the little skinny tuna fish cans versus uh, um, a regular size vegetable can. So it can, it can range um, all the way up to 54 cans because you can get a, a lot more of the little skinny cans in the thing as you, as you can uh, uh, the regular size uh, veggie cans. We picked up one, put it together, put it in our uh, uh, kitchen pantry, and it works like a charm. Uh, you got to be a little bit smarter than um, the can uh, tracker itself so that you can understand how to load it so you can truly get a first in first out kind of a kind of a thing. The way it's put together is just a hair confusing and I've seen some uh, commentary on it um, that folks actually couldn't figure it out so they boxed it back up and sent it back to the um, so but it only takes a little bit. There's three shelving um, sections in it. The bottom shelf is where you're, where it all feeds out and the top shelf feeds right into the bottom shelf and then there's a middle shelf in there that follows the top shelf. So if you stack it with your newest stuff um, and hold that for last and put it in the middle shelf, then you can truly get a FIFO uh, first in, first out, out of it. Um, they're a little pricey. They're available on Amazon. Um, I found them to be terrific. This is not a paid endorsement. I get nothing out of this, except I wanted to pass along a really good idea. So I know this, uh, this particular video went on a little bit longer than uh, uh, my normal videos do, but I think it's worthwhile to uh, get into some detail about rethinking your prepping plan. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you all on the next video.